Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in New York. Again, today we have the pleasure of um, having Tiziana Bertinotti, yes. uh, who is an acupuncturist in New York. Uh, and uh, Tiziana shared some great tips on how nutrition can improve sleep. Uh, so today I just wanted to explore that a little bit more and try and work out what other tips you have um, to allow people to get to sleep. So, you know, sleep hygiene. Uh, we've talked about nutrition, but it'd be good to know what else you recommend. So another area that I look at is uh, the use of gadgets, blue light coming from um, iPads, iPhones, laptops. So I suggest that people stop uh, looking at any of those at least two hours before bedtime, if okay. not four. Yes, yes, because they overstimulate the brain and the brain stays overstimulated and then that can disrupt. Is it something to do with the kind of the, the you mentioned blue light? I mean, yeah. uh, is there something specific about the light or is it just the, yeah, the just information that people are taking in? Or, no, it's or? not just the information, it's the actual blue light that oh, right, stimulates, okay. yeah the brain into keeping it awake basically and does that also apply with tv and stuff like that or just uh, just gadgetry not so much with tv as long as it's watched from you know a good distance okay. and i wouldn't recommend to have a tv in the bedroom either right yeah nothing in the bedroom just you know so <laughs> so <laughs> just okay fine so um no gadgets for about four hours you'd say well uh, two hours but uh, mm. if you can do four I know it's not doable for a lot of people, mm. but, you know, just to give you the idea that... Well, the truth yeah. is, it is doable, I guess. It's just that we we choose not to because, yeah. you know, we sort of feel that we have to keep up and yeah. get everything done. There's this kind of element of perfectionism in society and everyone is sort of incredibly, you know, trying to live up to mm. doing everything and being getting everything done. And uh, So ideally, in the evening, you know, we... We should wind down, mm -hmm. you know, and a um, good way to wind down maybe is to read a good book. Mm -hmm. um, again, not a horror story or anything that right. stimulates us, you know, something nice and pleasant. Or do some meditation. You know, it's very important to settle the mind, to calm the mind, calm the shen, as we say in, in Chinese medicine. Um, because a lot of us can't sleep properly because of racing minds. So it's very important that we train our minds to just be still. We need to incorporate more stillness and calmness into our lives, even if it's just 10, 15 minutes a day. Um, and it can be done at any time of the day, uh, and certainly in the evening. It's like a bedtime routine. You know, we have bedtime routines for our kids. You know, a nice warm bath, a nice mm. story. You know, we're winding down nice and mm. slowly. We should be doing the same. Okay. So, um how do you how would you recommend that people kind of wind down so we talked in the last video and you said you know avoid uh, a big meal for about four hours yeah. before um, uh, before going to bed mm -hmm. uh, in terms of winding down do you think that winding down should happen in bed or should it happen outside of bed mm, you know already outside of bed before okay. we even get right. into bed I think so in nice theory, and slowly yeah in theory by the time you get on your bed you're yeah. ready to sleep yeah that's why your eyes feel heavy you know okay you feel serene in your mind peaceful and then you just drop off so i guess one of the big problems is to just try and stay out of the bedroom as much as possible during the daytime right or mm -hmm. and only really associate the bedroom with sleeping and yeah okay, okay, okay great yeah uh, anything else that you could recommend that would uh, that helps people or that is uh, a potential barrier to achieving good sleep yeah, so um, as I said, about, about the mind, uh, trying to find ways of um, uh, you know, coping with stress and erasing mind that work for you. Uh, for some people it's meditation. Some people find meditation boring or you know, it's not for them. Um, if not, practices like yoga, uh, tai chi, qigong, mm -hmm. are very useful. Um, so anything that's sort of, because uh, you see, we, we are human beings, but we've turned into human doing. Yes. We're constantly doing, doing, doing. We need to be more. We need to be present and be still a bit more. So, okay. Um, so that certainly sounds, I mean, that, you know, and what about exercise? Do you recommend exercise before bed? Do you recommend that people go for a walk or 
or is exercise bad before bed? How do you feel about well, exercise? Well, it depends on the person, but in general, if you do too much aerobic exercise before bed, again, it's too stimulating, mm -hmm. and then that can actually be detrimental to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, but a little bit, for example, I do some yoga or qigong mm -hmm. close to bedtime, and it works very well for me and right. for a lot of people. How long do you s spend? I do about that? half an hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. not every night, yes. but you know. Um, but some people can just go to bed after having run for yeah, miles yeah. and sleep well. So yeah. it varies from person to person. So um, that's the beauty of my medicine. We work, I work with individual, so whatever works for them. I have friends that have a coffee and then they can just go to bed and mm. sleep. I mean, I could never do that and most people can't, but there are people that can. So, you know, we, we work with what we've got. Fabulous. Um, great, thank you so much. That's really interesting. Um, thank you. Maybe we should uh, explore the sleep uh, thing a bit more, and exact, and you know, you could talk to us a little bit about Chinese medicine and sleep, mm -hmm. and how Chinese medicine views sleep, and how you you yes. explore that uh, in the next video. Yes. So, if you could just tell us how people could contact you if uh, they needed to find out more or ask you any questions, I guess you wouldn't mind if people contacted no, not at you. No, all. So. I live and practice in York, the UK, and um, the name of my practice is York Traditional Acupuncture, and the website is www.yorktraditionalacupuncture.co.uk. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best.